All right, so then there's Eva from Southside, and she says, my doctor told me this isn't my best option. I should stick with glasses. Why can't I have the procedure? Very good question. This is actually a very good question in a way because, like I said, the first thing patients should ask doctors is, what am I a candidate for? Now, when they're told they're not a candidate for, what, what is missing now is LASIK, right? Again, this is important because all the patient is saying here is, I was told I'm not a candidate for LASIK. My point again, why only LASIK? Why doesn't the doctor or the patient sit down and think, what is the best for me? And now why am I being told, no, is there a pathology? Is there a disease? Is my retina or brain damaged that I can't see? If those are not the cases, there are, again, the whole options we just discussed. Like we have another patient here today, uh, Larry. Let's say there are a few reasons. The most common ones I'll tell you as having taught LASIK all over the world, I'll give you quick pointers. The most common reason I found patients coming to me that their surgeon said they are not candidates for LASIK is because LASIK is the only thing they do. So then, because the patient doesn't fit the parameter, they basically tell the patient, I can't help you, but they haven't completed the statement that there are other things that can be done. Two, the conditions for your eye to have surgery, your cornea may be too thin, you may be extremely nearsighted, extremely farsighted, or very high astigmatism, or you may have crossed into an age where your lens must be having changes in it. So once you decide what is going on in your eye, there is absolutely a procedure that suits you, is safe for you, and can be great vision. And that's where Larry comes in, where we can even put in intraocular lenses or a, or a contact lens bruise permanently in the eye, what I call lens augmentation procedure. And you absolutely have an option to see. Maybe this sounds simplistic, but you wouldn't go to a restaurant that just had one menu option. Uh, of, of, of course, you're talking about a medical procedure here, but you want to know that you do have options with the guidance of a world-class surgeon. Since we've just been talking about Larry, why don't we bring you up here onto the set as our live webcast continues on newsforjacks.com with Dr. Arun Galani. All right, so did you wear glasses, contacts? What was your story? I wore glasses since very young, uh, contacts, um, middle school on, and started developing problems with the contact lenses and was taken out of them for a number of years. Uh, wanted to get back to being free and being able to do what I want without having the restrictions of the glasses. All right, so you go seek out <clears throat> some medical advice and you visit a doctor presumably a LASIK surgeon, and the surgeon tells you what? Told me I was not a candidate because of some corneal concerns and, and thinness of the cornea. And you sit back, your initial reaction is what? Um, I still wanted that option to proceed to some surgeries, uh, what the best option would be. So uh, through referrals, got to Dr. Galani, and he proceeded with the uh, implantable contact lens. Now, Larry had some fortuitedness. He said, I'm going to have this. I'm going to find a way to get it done and make sure it's the right procedure for me. But Dr. Galani, the reality is there's some people who go, okay, I'm not a candidate. That's it. I'm done. I'm, I'm resigned to the fact I'm going to have to wear glasses. Correct. And I, we see that all the time in our practice because patients come saying their surgeon said can't have LASIK. And again, comes back to our point, that's only LASIK. What about the other stuff? So again, look at your eyes at camera. With Larry, when he presented to me, he had seen numerous eye surgeons all over. And uh, he was told he's not a candidate because his cornea is too thin and he was very nearsighted. So obviously, when you're shaping with the laser, you can't keep on shaping it because you're removing tissue from a cornea that thin. But he's so nearsighted, he could not function with glasses because he's a very active lifestyle. So we decided here that if we could correct his nearsightedness by putting in a contact lens permanently inside the eye. This way, you're not touching the cornea. You're going into his eye, procedure is done within minutes. You use drops to numb the eye, make a very small opening in the eye, release the lens in the eye. It goes inside, it's tucked into position. Within minutes, you're seeing, and you're done. And we did both eyes, one eye separate at a time. Uh, how do you feel, Larry, now with that? I feel great. Uh, the freedom to do what I want to do. There was no discomfort through the surgeries. Uh, it was done in a matter of about uh, a few hours each eye over the course of about a week. Mm -hmm. and, and while the procedure was being done, Piece of cake? I was out. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I didn't know anything about it. Uh -huh. Just so coming up, and then all of a sudden, I have the freedom to do the things that I've I've wanted to do. Has it changed your life dramatically? It has. Um, I'm able, to, like like John Paul said, of uh, the pool. I'm out on the in the athletic fields with my kids again. Bigger thing around. was that. Bigger thing was that. Because I remember uh, Larry when he came to me, and I made the promise to him. He said, "I, I love to teach baseball, and with his kids, he does that." And uh, today, you won some national. You have a national. And the other thing, Bruce, is you can still manipulate. I use that word manipulate because it's important. When you treat your eye like a camera, you can literally design the surgery for his lifestyle. He's closely approaching at that age where his reading is an issue too. 
Remember, that's the fourth okay, problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, nearsightedness, farsightedness, astigmatism are three things related to the shape of the cornea. The fourth is because your lens in the eye stops zooming after 45. Mm -hmm. So, if people zoom with their arms, right? And you hope your lo arms are long enough <laughs> that there comes a point. Or they get longer. Yeah. But with these ICL, the additional thing with which we can also do with LASIK is I gave them the ability to see distance and near both. So, that, Larry, is also important because, as you know from our planning, extensive discussion, we met many times. Because if someone comes with a, a question like, I've been told I'm not a candidate, uh, besides the time that I take with every patient, I take additional time because these patients are looking for help. So, you have to be their advocate and make sure you're guiding them in the right track, but also helping them make that decision. So, with them keeping all these things in mind, we gave them distance and near with ICL procedure, which is a great technique for cases who are not LASIK candidates. Larry, let me ask you, for those people who've been in a situation similar to yours, where they've gone to the doctor and the doctor said, you know, I I'd love to help you, but I can't. What's your advice to them? Keep checking. Uh, keep finding other surgeons. Speak to Dr. Galani. Um, it's been, his patients and his staff have been fabulous. And the technology that he had and the plan that he laid out from the very beginning, and the patients he had to, to see it through. Made it all worthwhile. I appreciate you sharing your Thank story. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks very much. We're going to take some Galani. more viewer emails here in a second. I want to remind you that Dr. Galani is also an inventor. We'll talk about those inventions and how they have changed the way you're treated coming up in just